Wow, hello guys, welcome to my channel. You're welcome to Master Peter's Online Academy, the very online academy where you can learn all the tips to us how you can gain mastery in any calculation course at all. All right, so guys, I want to sincerely appreciate every one of you who have subscribed to this channel and then coming back again to watch our content. We sincerely appreciate your art of love. Then thank you very much. And then if you are new in this channel, thank you for coming, sliding over. We appreciate you. Please don't forget to like this video at the end of watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not done so. And then sure you turn on the post notification bell for more exciting videos like this. So guys, in this module, I'll be teaching you exactly how to calculate work done during any thermodynamic process. And, and as such, we are going to solve complex and then multiple problems so that I'll be able to give you a better understanding as to how to handle thermodynamic process problems. All right, so without further ado, guys, let's jump into my computer screen as I hold you by the hand again and walk you through another aspect of engineering. All right, guys. Now, on this part, we have the very first question number one. Then we are asked to calculate the work done during a thermodynamic process of a mixture of gas at a constant pressure of 4.0 bars. If the volume of the gas increases from 10 meter cube to 25 meter cube, full stop. Remember, we are asked to calculate work done. And as you can see, based on our regular and usual approach to solving problems of this nature, the first thing we normally do is to extract the given parameters, which include the known and then the unknown parameters. With this, we will be able to get the relationship between the known and then and the unknown, so that we will be able to provide the right solution to this question. So shall we get into this as we list out the given parameters, all right? So we start by given that given. So the first thing that we are given here now is pressure. Okay. Pressure. And then the pressure that we are given here is given as 4.0 bars. And then one of the things you must understand is that a bar, one bar, for instance, as we have it here, one bar is equivalent to 10 raised to the power of 5. So we don't solve in bar. We most often the time we solve in newton millimeters. So we'll convert this to newton millimeters. We have this as 4.0 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 newton meters squared. So 10 raised to the power of 5 newton meters squared is equivalent to one bar, like you have it here. One bar is equal to 10 raised to the power of 5 newton per meter squared. So this is what one bar is, as you can see. So the next thing that we're given is volume, all right? Volume. So the initial volume is given at 10 meter cube. And then the final volume is given as 25 meter cube, as you can see. And as we have this, we are asked to find the work done. So, work done, W is unknown. So now, whenever you have a constant pressure, like you have in this questionnaire, Whenever you have a constant pressure, like you can see here, constant pressure, all right? Constant pressure, constant pressure, as you can see here. Whenever you have a constant pressure, it is an indication that the work done is between two processes. Like you have it now, we have the volume increases from one stage to another. That means there are two processes involved, which include the initial and then the final. So for us to be able to get work done when we are dealing with constant pressure, just recall that work done between two points is given as P change in volume, data volume, which by extension, this is P 
into V2 minus V1. Remember, change in volume is the difference between the final volume and then the initial volume. So, having known the values already given, we just put in and then substitute the values we are going to go. So, now the value of the pressure is 4 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 multiplied by the volume is 25 minus 10, as you can see. And now then we have the unit newton meter, all right, which is the same thing as Joe. Okay, so when we subtract this, we have 4 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 multiplied by, when we remove 10 from 25, we have 15, then new t meters and then this will be equal to 4 multiplied by 15 that will give us 60 times 10 raised to the power of the power of 5 new t meters one thing you should know is that one new t meters is equivalent to one joules don't forget this one new t meters is equivalent to one joule that means this can be equivalent to 6 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 6 Juice. This can be your answer. But you can decide to extend your answer to mega. Remember that 10 raised to the power of 6 is mega. So this is 6.0 mega joule. Alright, so you can leave your answer in standard form or convert it to what a complex unit. Alright, so this is all about this question. So whenever you are asked to determine work done during the thermodynamic process and such, you have a variable volume at you have a constant pressure at variable volume. All you just need to do is to recall this equation. Guys, there is another way you can also solve this problem. Alternatively, we can also solve this problem x or work done between two points is also given as integral of P dV. All right, integral of P dV. And then we have V2. We have V1. All right, so if we put in the value, this is 25, and then this is 10. What is our P? P is 4 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5, or dV. So when we integrate 4 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5, being that this is a constant, all right, as you can see there, this would have given us 4 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5V. Remember, anytime you integrate a constant, remember anytime you integrate a constant, you simply multiply the constants by the derivative, the variable you integrate with respect to, right? So this becomes 25 and then 10. Remember that this 25 and this 10, they serve as the upper limit and then lower limit. So whenever you integrate, all you need to do is to what? Substitute the lower limit. This is same thing as 4 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5. Are you there? Then into V, 25, then we have 10. Then this will give us 4 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 multiplied by 25 minus 10, if we put in the lower limit. So as you can see, as we progress, this becomes 4 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 multiply by when we remove 10 from 25 we have 15 again 4 multiplied by 15 will give us 60 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 and then this will give us 6 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 6 in joules and then we can leave our answer as 6.0 mega joule all right so this is the answer to this question so whether you use the second model or you use the first one you are actually very, very correct. But one of the differences between these two met methods that you have here is that the first one can only solve problems when the actual value of pressure is given. In other words, when pressure is not given in terms of volume. But when it is given in terms of volume, we cannot use this first approach. We will use the second approach where we need to integrate the pressure in terms of volume with respect to volume before we put in the upper limit and lower limit currently we have a question like that to look at maybe question number three as we progress i hope you understand 
all that you need to understand about this question please do consider subscribing to this channel and then you like this video make sure you share it without further ado let's dive into another question of the same nature but different question entirely okay guys now we have question number two are you there now this is the question a cylinder a cylinder contains gas with pressure of p equal to v cube plus four all over v bar full stop if the piston is allowed to move in such a way that the volume of the cylinder changes from one meter cube to five meter cube now determine the work done during this process okay so the first thing we would do again is to list the given parameters list the given parameters the given parameters very very simple so given so the first thing that we are given now is pressure which is given as v cube plus 4 over v all in bars and then by extension this is v cube plus 4 over v multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 newton per meter squared remember that we don't solve in bar and then one bar is equivalent to 10 raised to the power of 5 newton per meter squared i hope you understand this then as we read further we were given two volumes so we have initial volume to be given as what one meter cube and then the final volume is given at five meter cube let me quickly make a remark here assuming these volumes that you have here maybe they are given in liters or they are given in centimeter cube millimeter cube as the case may be you have to convert it to meter before you will substitute in their values ensure that they are in meter cube before you can substitute into the expression except it is stated otherwise are you there but otherwise you must ensure that the unit of volume they are all in meter cube if this is clear what else do we need to do we just need to state that the work done between these two processes remember it changes from one level to another so it means work done one to two is given as p dv and again we also measure that this same volume work done is also equal to v2 v1 then p dv so the question is can we use this first one which is p dv or we're going to use this or we should use both now this is where you need to pay attention both equation cannot give us the desired result as far as this question is concerned why this is because the pressure we are given it is not a true value it is value or an expression in terms of volume so whenever you are given pressure in terms of volume you must ensure that you use this integration method or this integration formula to calculate for the work done otherwise you will get it wrong the only condition whereby you use this first formula is when pressure has a real value a, a real value an integer like 150 20 but as long as the whatever you are given carries v which is volume or it's an expression in terms of v you must ensure that you use the second equation it shows that to be able to solve this we are going to say work done between one to two is equal to integral of v to v1 and then p dv so what we need to do now is to substitute for these guys so v2 is 5 v1 is this pressure now put in the value cube plus 4 over v multiply by 10 raised to the power of 5 dv so now we need to integrate this expression okay so in order to integrate this we can first of all reduce this expression to this level having work done equal to 
10 raised to the power of 5 being the constant integral of 5, 1, into v raised to the power of 3 plus 4 over v or dv. So remember, inside this bracket that we have inside the integral, we will integrate the terms individually. Remember, we have vq plus 4 over v. So we are going to integrate that separately. Then we have 10 raised to the power of 5 multiplied by, now let's integrate. So if we integrate v cube, we, will going to, we are going to increase the power by 1, and then this will give us 4. Now divide everything by the new power. Don't forget that this is integration. So when you are integrating a polynomial, you increase the power by 1, and then divide everything by the new power. So that's why we have v raised to the power of 4 all over 4, then plus. Now when you integrate an inverse, this will give you 4 lean v, or raised to the power of 5, 1. Are you there? I hope you, you're catching it. Remember, let me show you something here. If you have integral of 1 over x dx, you said that the answer is lean x, right? So the same way, if you have integral of a over x dx, when you integrate with respect to where you have a lean x. So if this is correct, that is how we're able to get 4 over v integral as 4 lean v. Are you there? Okay, so if you understand what we have here so far, then remember that this is just a hit boss to help you. All right, now we'll come back to the question. Now, having integrated this function, all we just need to do is to put in the integrals. In order to put in the, or substitute in the upper limit, and then again, substitute in the lower limit. So we have W between 1 and 2 is equal to 10 raised to the power of 5 multiplied by. So we have 5 raised to the power of 4 all over 4. The first thing I did now is to put in the value of volume 2, which is the upper limit. Anywhere you see V, put the upper limit. That's exactly what I've done. 5 raised to the power of 4 plus 4 in 5. What I have just done now, I have put in the upper limit minus to put in the lower limit we have one raised to the power of four over four then plus four lean one i hope you are here remember that this would have given us in joe that's the unit okay let's solve for that in order to solve this expression further all we just need to do here is if you take your calculator, your smart calculator, and then impute everything inside this first bracket into your calculator, we're going to have 162.69, then minus, when you also do the same to this other side, we'll have this as 0 0.25 in joules. I hope you get that clear. So 5 raised to the power of 4 over 4 plus 4 in 5. We give us 162.69 and then 1 raised to the power of 4 over 4 plus 4 in 1 will give us 0 0.25 and then when we remove what we have there this will give us 162.44 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 5 joules this is what we have we can decide to extend our answer to kilojoule or mega joule as we have it so let's as we want to leave our answer in kilo joule this will give us one six four four times 10 to the power of three joules we just remove two zeros from this guy and then use it to multiply 62.162.44 and our final answer becomes one six two four four kilo joule this is the answer but as well you can decide to leave your answer in mega joule if you want to leave your answer in mega joule again you divide this result by another 1000 this will, this will give us 16 points point two four four mega joule so this is the answer to this very question so as you can see it's very very simple we just need to understand a basic condition anytime you are obtaining work done at constant pressure so in this case because the pressure we are given in terms of v which is primarily an expression 
this is one of the reasons why we have to integrate before we substitute in the value of v1 and the value of v2 but otherwise we we'll have used the direct method i hope you understand the difference between this particular question and then question number one finally we want to solve question number three so that we will move on to the first law of thermodynamics i hope you are enjoying this class guys don't forget to like this video share this video and make your necessary comment at the comment section let's dive into that question number three without further ado okay all right guys now welcome to this section this is question number three as you can see and uh, then we are given that unit mass of a fluid at a pressure of six bar and with a specific volume of specific volume of 0 0.18 meter cube per kilogram contained in a cylinder behind the piston expand reversibly to a pressure of 0 0.3 but accordingly to a law p equal to c over v square comma where c is constant calculate the work done during this process during this process now if you check this question and then compare to other problems we solved before you will find out that first here pressure is not constant we have two different pressures, right? Six bar and then 0 0.3 bars. According to the parabolic law, as you can see there, P is equal to C over V square. Again, when we check the pressure relationship that we're given here, you will find out that we have C, which is a constant, and V, making this expression to contain three variables. So the first thing we want to do is that from these parameters given here, for these parameters given here, it is clear that P1, which is the first pressure, is 6. All right, so we can start with so given. So from here now we are given that pressure 1 is equal to 6 bars. And then normally pressure is supposed to be in newton millimeter so this is six multiplied by 10 to the power of five newton meter squared again if we move down we have the second pressure as 0 0.3 then we have p2 is equal to 0 0.3 bar and then this will give us 0 0.3 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of five Newton meter squared and again we are given specific volume which is volume one specific volume you see that the volume is given in meter cube per kilogram so per mass all right then we have volume per mass v1 is given as 0 0.18 meter cube per kilogram but v2 is not known and then the mass, because it is per meter width, the mass M, which is the unit mass, is given as what? One kilogram by standard. Now, we are asked to find work done. Work done. W between two points is equal to unknown. Now, from this same question, we were given the relationship, all right? Let's assume we divide this session into two. We're given that P is equal to C all over V squared. This is the relationship we're given. And then from here, we can make C the zero formula so that C becomes PV squared. Why do we need this? Now, if you check this question and then compare with question one and question two, you will find that we have two pressures. Then we have two volumes and then we have mass we have a constant so the first thing we want to do now is to find the value of c which is constant remember that same way from boy's law this constant this is constant so we can have this equation by extension that this is p1 v1 squared is equal to p2 
v2 squared. This is what this equation symbolizes. Are you there? If we say that c is equal to p1, sorry, pv squared, it means that it is p1 v1 equal to p2 v2 equal to p3 v3, just like that, and continues respectively with the power. So this is one of the things that we have. So the first thing we want to do is to state the equation for the work done. But because we are given a diagram, like you can see now, so the volume, the work done that we need now is within this shaded portion. Within this shaded portion. So how do we get the volume for this? The work done for that. So work done. W is given as negative M integral V2 V1 P dv which this is equivalent to minus m into shaded area which is the area of the shaded portion minus m multiplied by the area of shaded portion so it is the area of this shaded portion now that when we multiply it by this m we'll be able to get the work done but first and foremost, if we substitute into this equation, we will have that work done is equals to negative m integral of v2 v1 c over v squared all dv. Remember, we just substituted for the value of p. So if we extend this expression, this expression can be given as m c. Remember that c is a constant into integral of v2 v1 then 1 over v squared dv. Now, it's as simple as this. So for us to be able to integrate this, we then have this expression as w which is our work done is equal to minus m c open bracket. So whenever you want to integrate a function like this, you can possibly change this guy to integral of v2, v1, and then using the law of direct equation, inverse law, we have this dv. Are you there? So what does this mean? It means that we are integrating v raised to the power of negative 2. And what do we do? If we integrate this, we have minus mc into when we integrate this value we have, we have here, we're going to have this as minus 1. Remember, anytime you integrate, you add 1 to the power. So we are supposed to have negative 2 plus 1, and it will reduce the power to minus 1. Then we'll now divide the new power, everything by the new power, right? We have this. Then this becomes V2, this becomes V1. As we progress, by extension, this will have given us M minus MC into minus 1 all over v into v2 then v1 i hope you are following then by the time we remove this bracket or expand further this would have given us positive mc into 1 over v v squared v2 and then v1 we can decide to call this one equation one. Why are we calling this equation one? When we move up now, we'll find out that the value of V1, V2 is not given. Only the value of V1 is known. And then these pressures that we are given here will help us find V2. So what do we need to do now? All we just need to do is to first of all find C. After obtaining the value of C, we can now find the value of V2. Now recall, That C, as we made the sort of formula earlier, is P V squared, which is equivalent to P1 V1 squared. So in this case, our pressure one, the first pressure that we were given, then this would have given us six in bars multiplied by 0 0.18 squared. And then the value of C would have given us 0 0.19. 4, 4 meter cube per kilogram. This is the value of C. 
Now that we have been able to obtain the value of C, then we can now find the value of V2. In order to find V2, again, this C is equal to P V squared, which is equivalent to P to V2 squared. Are you there? So, how will I find my V1? In order to find V2, what is C? We'll now make V2 the sort of formula. V2 squared is equal to C over P. And then V2 is equal to the square root of C over P. And if we put in the value of C and the, the value of P2, remember that this is P2 and then this is P2. Okay? This would have given us the square root of 0 0.1. 1944 as the value of C all over 0 0.3 as our bar. Okay, then by the time we solve this out, V2 becomes 0 0.805 meter cube per kilogram. So, guys, we have been able to obtain the value of V2. And then we have value of V1. So we can now come back to equation 1, which is our work done, as you can see from here. Work done between process 1 to 2. And then put in the value of M, put in the value of C, put in the value of V1 and V2, and we are good to go. So if this is clear enough, all we just need to do now is to come over here and have that work done. Work done is equal to MC open bracket. Now, if we come up here, by the time we put in the upper limit first, we'll have 1 over V2 minus 1 over V1. All right, so we have been able to put in the upper limit and the lower limit. So what we just need to do now is to put in the value of V2, put in the value of V1, put in the value of C, put in the value of M, and then we can now get our work done. I hope you're understanding what we are doing right away here. All right, so... If this is clear enough, all we just need to do, guys, is to put in these values. Now, we know that C is given as 0 0.1944 multiplied by open bracket 1 all over 0 0.805 which is our v2 then minus 1 all over 0 0.18 this is what we have now remember that what we have here now is still in bar so to remove it from bar we will now multiply by 10 to the power of 5 now in joules i hope you are following me right now in joules per kilogram instead of substituting for the mass we just put it per mass all right so this is equivalent to 0 0.1 9, 4, 4, multiply by, everything inside this bracket would have given us 1.2422 minus, when you divide, 1 divided by 0 0.018, this will give us 5.5, 5, 5, 6, or multiply by 10 to the power of 5, joule per kilogram all right so as we progress this is 0 0.1944 multiplied by when we remove this guy from this end we will have this as negative 4.314 multiplied by 10 to the power of 5 joule per kilogram and if we multiply out everything at this end this will give us negative 8385 0 joule per kilogram. This is what we have. We can as well convert our answer to kilojoule. Are we there? We can as well convert our answer to kilojoule. And then this would have given us 83.85 kilojoule per kilogram. This is the answer. But this is the work done. Now, the work done by the fluid itself now, therefore, the work done by 
the fluid is positive 83.85 kilojoule per kilogram. So this is the work done by the fluid. By the fluid. But this first one we calculated is the work done on the fluid. Work done on the fluid. But work done by the fluid is what we have as 83.85. So in this case, you see that this is a bit complex compared to the first one because we have three unknowns. We have the value of V unknown, V2 unknown, and then this constant unknown. Then we're given two pressures. So in order to solve this, we're able to go through this. Remember that this 10 to the power of 5 that we later use here is the one we're supposed to use from the beginning. Okay? I hope you understand what we have done so far. Thank you very, very much. In the next video, I'll be teaching you exactly how to apply the first law of thermodynamic equation to solve complex engineering thermodynamics problem. You'll be mind blown if you watch those content. Guys, if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, do consider subscribing to this channel and ensure you turn on the post notification bell for more exciting videos. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. See you guys in the next video. Don't forget to leave a comment below. Forget to leave a comment below. Share this video. Share this video. Share this video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys in the next module.